One week ago, Intel announced its new range of 12th gen core processors, and we were able to share the key specifications and our first impressions of the new CPUs. However, we weren't allowed to share how fast the new CPUs actually are at that stage, something that we're now able to do. But before we dive into the benchmark results, it's worth a quick recap of the key features of the new 12th gen core CPUs. First and foremost, unlike the last umpteen generations of Core CPU, the new 12th gen processors are based on a whole new hybrid architecture. What this means is that unlike previous CPUs, which had a single set of cores, all with the same capabilities and performance, 12th gen processors have two types of cores. The first type of core are called performance cores or P cores for short, and they're broadly similar to the types of cores found in earlier core processors, albeit with lots of low level performance enhancements, which Intel claims boost IPC by up to 19%. These P cores are tuned for single and lightly threaded code, as is typically used in games and productivity applications. The second type of core are called efficient cores or E cores, and are tuned for background tasks such as security security sweeps and multi-threaded applications such as rendering. These aren't an entirely new type of core and you can trace their ancestry back to the ultra low power Atom CPUs which were engineered for maximum power efficiency. Sitting between the P cores and E cores is what Intel calls the thread director which intelligently allocates threads to the appropriate core, the whole process happening automatically with no user interaction required. The P cores and E cores are functionally independent, each having their own pool of level two cache, but ultimately they all share access to a huge level three cache, system memory and IO. And speaking of memory, 12th gen CPUs are the first to support DDR5, up to 4,800 megahertz, although they do also support DDR4 up to 3,200 megahertz. IO has also been given a boost with support for PCIe 5 adding cards, although the M.2 slots only runs at PCIe 4. All these new features mean that 12th gen CPUs have a new socket with considerably more pins than their predecessors, communicating with the motherboard via a dense array of 1700 connectors versus the 11th gen's 1200 pins. As the new socket 1700 has the same width but is taller than the old socket 1200, not all coolers are compatible with the new CPUs. However, you may not have to rush out and buy a new cooler as some but not all motherboard manufacturers, such as Asus for example, include two sets of mounting holes on their boards, one for socket 1200 coolers and one for socket 1700 coolers. The new 12th gen core platform also has built-in support for Thunderbolt 4, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and Wi-Fi 6E in the new Intel Z690 chipset, although it will still be up to motherboard manufacturers how they implement these features. These tables highlight the key specs of the new Intel 12th gen core processors versus their immediate predecessors, the 11th gen core processors. Intel's first wave of 12th gen core CPUs comprises of three main models, an i9, i7 and i5, plus a variant of each without an integrated GPU, which you can spot by the addition of an F at the end of the model number. The biggest change, of course, is that the new 12th gen CPUs have the hybrid architecture, comprising of that mix of P cores and E cores. This time round, Intel has used this to differentiate the i9 from the i7. For example, whilst the i9-12900K and i7-12700K both have 8 P cores, the i9 has 8 E cores, whilst the i7 only has 4 E cores. This means there's a far bigger difference between the new 12th gen i9 and i7 than there was between the old 11th gen i9 and i7, both of which had the same number of cores. Lower down the stat, the new i5-12600K has 6 P cores and 4 E cores. We benchmarked the three new Intel 12th gen core CPUs up against the equivalent AMD Ryzen CPUs plus older Intel 11th gen core CPUs. And to make the comparison as fair as possible, all the systems were tested in a very similar configuration with the same cooler, graphics card and same amount of RAM. Speaking of memory, as 12th gen CPUs are the first to support DDR5, we tested this with the new type of memory, all the older CPUs being tested with DDR4. All the testing was conducted in Windows 11 Home with the latest drivers and BIOSes. 
Cinebench R20 is based on the popular modeling, animation, and rendering application Cinema 4D, and this test renders a complex scene on a single thread. Now, whilst you'd never deliberately choose to only render on a single thread, this is an interesting test as it reveals a single thread performance difference between the various CPU architectures. And what's immediately obvious from this graph is how much faster the three new Intel 12th gen CPUs are than anything else. In terms of gen on gen improvement, the new 12th gen P cores are around 13% faster than the old uniform cores in 11th gen, marking a strong start for Intel's new CPUs. The next Cinebench test we ran renders the same scene as the previous test, but now on all available threads, so generally favours CPUs with lots of cores and threads. This is the first time we can start to see the benefits of Intel's hybrid architecture, as when the P cores and E cores are working together in tandem, they deliver unbeatable performance. The new Core i9-12900K in particular is an absolute beast, streaking past all other CPUs with a sizeable 7% lead over the Ryzen 9 5950X, which was the previous champ at this sort of multi-threaded workload. It really does look like Intel's hybrid architecture gives you the best of both worlds. Outstanding single-threaded performance and outstanding multi-threaded performance. The next test, Blender, is a popular 3D rendering application that runs on all of the CPU cores and threads. This graph shows the number of seconds taken to render the scene, so a smaller number means faster rendering. After seeing the multi-threaded Cinebench result, it's no surprise to see the Core i9-12900K also dominating this graph. But it's also very revealing to see the new Core i5-12600K outpace the old Core i9-11900K, a CPU that's just seven months old. All in all, Blender reaffirms that Intel's 12th gen really is the way to go for a CPU rendering PC. After seeing the significant boost to single-threaded rendering speed of the new 12th gen core CPUs in Cinebench, we were keen to see how the new processors perform in games. In the first game we benchmarked, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, all the CPUs proved to have near identical performance. As the graph shows, the performance difference in games between CPUs is marginal at best. Any one of these modern mid-range to high-end CPUs will give you brilliant gaming performance. Looked at another way, make sure you buy a good CPU, but you'll get more benefit out of upgrading the GPU as that's what really bottlenecks the frame rates in most games. Metro Exodus also showed the same pattern as Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The key takeaway from these graphs is that the CPU choice really doesn't matter for gaming. Spend your money on a better graphics card instead. We also benchmarked the veteran but still extremely popular online shooter Counter-Strike Global Offensive. As the code for CSGO is nearly a decade old, it's more CPU limited than many modern games which are GPU limited. So we did see a performance difference between the CPUs, even at the 1440p resolution we tested at. And whilst it's true that the new Intel 12th gen CPUs did top the CSGO chart, we're only talking a lead of around 5% over the fastest AM AMD CPUs, besides which the frame rate's already so high you couldn't spot the difference. That said, if you're a pro gamer playing in a CSGO tournament, you definitely want a 12th gen Intel Core gaming PC from 3XS Systems. To round off the game testing, we also ran the popular synthetic benchmark 3D Mark Time Spy on all the CPUs. Like CSGO, this did show more of a difference between the CPUs than Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro Exodus, with the three new Intel 12th gen processors showing a strong lead. However, it's important to note that 3D Mark is a synthetic benchmark, so it doesn't necessarily indicate how real games perform. Now, whilst pretty much all the processors consume a similar amount of power when idle, the peak power when gaming tells a very different story. High power consumption was a real problem for Intel's 11th gen CPUs, but the new 12th gen CPUs are much more power efficient. For instance, the new Core i9-12900K drew a noticeable 55 watts or 10% less than its direct predecessor, the old Core i9-11900K, a very welcome improvement in these days of soaring energy prices. The last thing we wanted to check out for the 12th gen core launch was how much of a performance difference there is between DDR4 and DDR5 memory. After all, these are the first CPUs to support DDR5. 
Crucially, we've yet to see any motherboards that support both types of memory, so you need to decide up front which type of memory you want and stick with that. You can't change later unless you want to swap motherboards. Now, for the purposes of this analysis, we chose the Core i9-12900K, which, as the flagship model, makes the most sense to pair with the latest DDR5 memory. As already explained, we had to use two different motherboards for this testing. The DDR5 system using an Asus ROG Strix with two 16GB DIMMs of 5200MHz Corsair Dominator Platinum running at CAS38, and the DDR4 system an Asus ROG with two 16GB DIMMs of 3200MHz Corsair Vengeance running at CAS16. The specs of these DIMMs is interesting because it reveals a key characteristic in that whilst DDR5 has a much higher frequency and therefore bandwidth than DDR4, it also has a much higher latency. It therefore wasn't a total surprise when we found that the benefits of the higher frequency were largely cancelled out by the higher latency and that there was only a minuscule performance difference between DDR5 and DDR4. As the graph shows, we measured a mere 1% performance increase upgrading to DDR5, such a small figure that is arguably statistically irrelevant and is way too small to be quantifiable by humans. However, we did note that DDR5 consumes a little less power when under load than DDR4, so that's a good thing for long-term power savings. Whilst the current performance difference between DDR4 and DDR5 is effectively zilch, that isn't to say that DDR5 is a bad option. It does consume less power than DDR4, and latencies will no doubt improve over time, increasing performance as DRAM manufacturers get to grips with the new technology. As such, DDR5 is not a bad choice, giving you the option to upgrade to faster DIMMs later, something that going for DDR4 won't, as this memory is already pretty mature and unlikely to improve much in the future. With all that said and done though, DDR4 is still a very viable choice for a 12th gen core CPU, especially with DDR5 being in very limited supply until well into 2022. Fierce competition in the CPU market means PC gamers and content creators are now spoiled for choice when it comes to choosing the perfect processor. Intel's 11th gen core CPU showed just how tough that competition is, being superseded by the 12th gen core processors after just seven months. The new 12th gen CPUs aren't just a rehash of earlier technology either, they have a whole new hybrid architecture and a whole host of other industry firsts too, most noticeably PCIe 5 and DDR5. The real value of the new hybrid architecture is that it gives you the best of both worlds, turbocharged single-threaded performance and best-in-class multi-threaded performance, all accomplished calmly and quietly without guzzling a ridiculous amount of power. It's a very smart move by Intel, allowing it to play to its historic strength of delivering high single-threaded performance, whilst also snatching the multi-threaded performance crown from the third-gen Ryzen's. Unlike the disappointing 11th gen Core i9-11900K, the 12th gen Core i9-12900K is a real beast too, with enough of a performance difference to justify its premium price. At £579, it's priced almost £100 less than Ryzen 9 5950X, and it's significantly faster. The Core i7-12700K is no slouch either, and at £419, it's £60 cheaper than the Ryzen 9 5900X, but again, much faster. The Core i5-12600K looks to be another bargain too, as at £289, it's only a tenner more than the Ryzen 5 5600X, but it's faster than the significantly more expensive Ryzen 7 5800X, which is great news for consumers, as it means you're paying less for a superior product, the result of true competition in the CPU market again. We'd love to know what you think of Intel's bold new 12th gen core CPUs and return to pole position. Leave a comment below and tell us which processor you'd pick and why. And head on over to our website to view the new 12th gen range, dozens of new motherboards, coolers and memory options, and the brilliant new range of gaming PCs and workstations built by our acclaimed 3XS systems team.